Now we'll talk about Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, more than anyone, helped shape the modern understanding of the world. Newton lived from 1642 to 1727, so late 1600s, early 1700s. And he has had a huge impact on everybody's thinking. The author James Gleick, he's a great author. This is a book by him on Isaac Newton. Um, he, this is a biography. It's a short one, but very readable and very well researched. The way he put it was this. He said, we are all Newtonians. And what he meant was that all of us think in the way that Newton thought because his influence has been so far reaching that we all understand the world to be the way he described it. Our understanding of motion, our understanding of forces, our understanding of gravity, and our understanding of, understanding of the solar system all goes back to Newton's ideas and Newton's explanation. Now specifically, Newton produced his theory of gravity what we call Newton's law of universal gravitation and this was a mathematical description of the force of gravity and if you imagine the Sun here and suppose you have a planet orbiting the Sun like say here's the Earth and it's going around the Sun in an orbit that's uh, roughly circular but really elongated a little bit so it's really an ellipse the the force of gravity is what holds the planet in its orbit so the planet might be moving along, say, in this direction. And according to the, the law of inertia, it would continue to move in that path if something didn't pull it away. And it's this inward force, this inward pull from the sun that causes the planet, rather than to be moving straight, causes it to deviate from that straight line path. So it's pulled toward the sun, and it moves in this curve, this arc around the sun. And Newton's law of gravity and his understanding of motion and inertia explained all of that. And he had the math to go along with this. He had a mathematical description of, of the force of gravity. And Newton could mathematically show that if you had the sun here attracting these planets according to this force of gravity, and he developed an equation for it, he could show mathematically that the orbits would be elliptical. And that's not a trivial thing to do. That's some pretty difficult math to, to do. But Newton was able to do it. He was one of the best mathematicians, if not the best mathematician of the era. And he was able to show mathematically that Kepler's laws had to be true. And that, that's a very significant point. I'm going to say it again. Newton was able to show mathematically that Kepler's laws were correct. So Newton had the theory, this theory of physics, that was mathematically based that showed the planets had to be moving in, in elliptical orbits. And Kepler had the data, the empirical data, the observations, the actual measurements of the positions that showed that the orbits of the planets were elliptical. And the two coincided perfectly. And that's good science. When the theory and the data match up, then that's reason to believe that the theory is a good theory, an accurate theory, a true theory, a good description of the world. And this is a perfect and famous and very beautiful example of exactly such a matchup between the theory and the data. Newton's mathematical theory and Kepler's empirical data, both showing the, the, the nature of the solar system, the nature of this world that we inhabit, elliptical orbits and other details about the motion of the planets in the sky. What people had sought to explain for thousands of years, going back to ancient times among the ancient Greeks, these guys finally figured it out and got it right. And it was the astronomer Edmund Halley who recognized the significance of this at the time. Halley, who's known for Halley's Comet. Halley was the guy who predicted the return of Halley's Comet every 76 years, and it's named after him. Halley was a friend of Newton's, one of Newton's very, very few friends. Newton didn't have many friends. He didn't want many friends. He was extremely introverted. But, but Halley was reading Newton's work and discussing these ideas with Newton. And when Halley realized that Newton had correctly explained all of this, Halley was the one who, who convinced Newton that he needed to publish this work, that he needed to put this out there and let people see and understand. And Halley
Kelly was the guy who put up the funding to publish the first edition of the Principia. And when that was published, Newton was immediately famous all over the educated world. People who, who read that, the people who could, who could follow his arguments and follow his mathematical reasoning, immediately recognized this is the explanation that people have been looking for since antiquity. And Isaac Newton has finally got it right and has finally explained it. And now we can see and, and understand. We see these little dots of light moving across the sky at night. And now it all makes sense. The, this, this universe that we live in and the way it is and why it is the way it is now made sense. And Newton went on not just to explain the planetary orbits, to, but to construct a whole new view of the world, this entire understanding of physics, including forces and theory of motion and light, as well as the understanding of gravity and all of the mathematics to go along with it. Classical physics, as we know it, was basically invented by Isaac Newton.